All right, guys, welcome to lesson 4.7. Today, you guys are going to learn how to find something known as the average rate of change, which, just so you guys know, is just a fancy word. I think we talked about back in unit one. Um, but there's a reason we call it that class instead of slope, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're going to be finding the average rate of change of a given function on a specific interval and determine if that function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. And once again, that's a revisit to chapter one as well. If your slope or your average rate of change is positive, that means your function's increasing. Negative, you're decreasing. And if it's zero, it's constant. Increasing functions are functions that go up as you move to the right. Decreasing functions are functions that go down as you move to the right. Constant functions are functions that stay flat as you move to the right. And that's all review from unit one. But we're going to be applying this stuff to quadratics today. And that's also going to make clear why we use this word instead of slope. Now, before we begin, imagine that we have a car. Now, let's just say that we're going on vacation or something, right? And um, where we're going is about mm, 300 miles away. And let's say it takes us six hours to get there. Okay, well, we went 300 miles. In six hours. If we reduce that, we get 50 miles per hour. Okay, and so that basically we're finding the speed of the car, right? We take how far we went and how long it took, and that tells us the speed of the car. However, here's the problem Have you guys ever been on a six mile or a, a 300 mile vacation drive or something like that? Um, do you really just sit in the car that long? Not really. Um, you pull over, you get a snack, right? or maybe you have to go to the bathroom, or maybe uh, you hit a lot of stoplights or there's traffic jams. You're not going 50 miles per hour the whole time, right? What this is, is this is an average rate of change. This is an average speed of your car. At some points, you were going faster than 50 because you were on the freeway. At other points, you were going slower than 50 because of traffic or maybe you were at a stoplight. But overall, it averages to 300 miles in six hours which is 50 miles per hour. And this is what we call the average speed, or in this case, the average rate of change. So when in Algebra 1, we learned about this thing called slope. And it tells us how much does x change as y changes. In other words, if I go from this point to this point, how much did the x change? Well, it looks like I went over one space to the right, so that means my x changed by 1. I went from x equals 1 to x equals 2. How much did my y change? Well, I went from y equals 0 up here to y equals 2. So I went up two spaces. So I went over 1, up 2. So how much does y change as x changes? Well, y changes two spaces for every one space of x. And that's what we call our rise over run also known as our slope. Now on a straight line though, that never changes. It's always two over one, two over one, two over one. This, the rate of change never changes. It's constantly the same. It's always over one of two, over one of two. And that would be kind of like being in a car going at a constant speed. You're always going the same number of miles in the same amount of time, right? And that would be like a car that's not changing its speed. But in real life, whenever we're driving a car, right, when we're on the freeway, we're going really fast, but then we get hit traffic and we're going really slow. And then sometimes we just stop and take a break and it's flat because we're not moving at all. So that changes. You don't have a constant rate of change anymore. Well, same thing happens with curving lines. Like if I wanted to find what's my slope from here to here, well, it looks like I went over one, up one. But what if I want to find my slope from this point to this point? Well, now my slope is over one, up three. So the slope is constantly changing. And I'm only picking those points because they're at nice places. But technically, from here to here, you can't really even say the slope from here to here is one. Even there, it's just an average rate of change. Because as you guys can see, if I connect this with a straight line, it doesn't match this curve. And that's because the rate is constantly changing the whole way. As we go up, it's getting faster and faster. 
So what this the slope of this straight line that I just drew here in black is, is what that is telling me is telling me the average rate of change of y with respect to x. Okay, so how much does y change as x changes over this interval? But it's not literally the slope of the function. So instead we call it an average rate of change of the function. So what is an average rate of change then? An average rate of change is basically the slope between any two points. And it tells you how much y changed versus how much x changed over that interval. But depending on what two points you pick, you'll get different answers every time if it's a curving function. So with a straight line, it doesn't matter what two points you pick. You're always going to get the same answer. But with curving functions, you will get different answers for different points. So what is an average rate of change? Well, as we've already said, basically it's just an average slope, right? So um, the average rate of change, also known as average slope of a function on the interval a to b, is given by a formula. Now, as you guys remember, um, the slope formula back in Algebra 1 was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's actually exactly what this formula is. It just looks a little bit different, so let me explain why that is. In, in Algebra, a lot of times we define functions like this, right? So if I have an x1, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. Let's say that x equals a. Okay, well that's going to give me one y value. And let's say that x equals b. So if I plug in a different x value, I get a different y value. Well, in this case, if I do x1, x2 minus x1, that's the same thing as b minus a. And if I do y2 minus y1, well that's going to be f of b minus f of a. So this formula here is just using function notation to represent an old formula. It's really just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, and the reason why I'm getting you guys used to that notation is because we use that in calculus and I want it to make sense when we get there. All right, next. If the average rate of change is positive, that means your function is increasing on that interval. And notice that this notation here, we're talking about intervals. So we're going from A to B. Why does that matter? Because remember on the last slide that I shared with you guys, if I asked you guys to find the slope from here to here, you're going to get a different answer than if you were to find the slope from here to here. Those are going to be different slopes. And therefore, we're looking at an interval. For this one, we're looking at the interval from x equals 0 to x equals 1. For this one, we're looking at the interval from x equals 2 to x equals 3. So you get different slopes on different intervals. So we do need, when we're doing average rates of change, we, we have to actually include an interval so we know which interval we're working on. So if the average rate of change is positive, then that means the function is increasing on the interval from A to B. If the average rate of change is negative, that means it's decreasing on that interval. And if the average rate of change is zero, that means it doesn't change. Now, I want you to understand that a little bit. So like, for instance, here, here's an example of a negative rate of change. If I were to go from here to here, as I go from left to right, we are going downwards, right? So that would be a negative rate of change. Whereas if I were to go from here to here, that would be a positive average rate of change because we're increasing over time. Okay, but now I want to show you something interesting. What if I went from here to here? Well, my average rate of change is zero. Over the, the time span from x equals negative two to x equals two, the y value went from one to one. So it's like the y value didn't change at all. Now, did the y value really change as I moved along this line to get from point A to point B? Yes, the y value went down, but then it also went back up. And the amount that it went down is the same as the amount that it went back up, so we landed at the same exact height over that interval. And so we would say the average rate of change is zero because it really didn't change on that interval because we ended up where we started, so nothing really changed. But really, it did change along the way 
we're just saying on average it landed where it started basically in terms of height same height value all right so if the average rate of change is zero then that means that the function is was constant on that interval um but there we go let's go ahead and take a look at example one uh, we're going to learn how to find the average rates of change here um, using tables. So first one here says find the average rate of change of this function on the integrated interval and determine if it is increasing, decreasing, or constant. And I'm going to add something here, and I'd like you guys to add it as well in your notes. I want you guys to put y equals f of x. I want to use function notation here. All right. Well... Here's the interval that they're giving us. We're going from x equals 1 to x equals 8. So x2 is 8 and x1 is 1. Now I need to find the y values that go with those x values. So what's f of 8 and what's f of 1? Well, for that, we're going to use our table. f of 8, if you plug 8 in up here, is the y value for that x value of 8. So my x value of 8 has a y value of 65. Next one, what's f of 1? So if I plug in 1 for x, what do I get for y? Well, I'm going to find where x equals 1, then I'm going to find the y value that goes with it, which is 2. And so now, f of 8 minus f of 1 over 8 minus 1, the two numbers I got from over here, has changed into 65 minus 2 over 8 minus 1. What this tells me is how much the y has changed. I went from 65 to 2, which is 63. Reached by two points, so put that in a difference of 63. And then it decreased from 8 to 1, which is a total decrease of 7. And so my average rate of change over that time is 9. Okay. Now, since that's a positive number, that would mean that it's increasing. And there's our final answer. So on the interval from 1 to 8, the function was going up 9 spaces for every x value on average. Okay, guys, for number 2, I, I changed this number here to a 6. On, on your notes, it probably says 5, but I changed it to a 6, okay? So go ahead and change that number to a 6. Um, all right, so the first thing I want you guys to do is set this formula up for me. So fill in these four blanks, top, left, right, bottom, left, bottom, right. Go ahead and fill those in real quick. What do you get? If you need to pause the video, go ahead. And I'm about ready to share the answer with you now. So this is what you guys should have gotten. You should have gotten f of 6 minus f of negative 3 over 6 minus negative 3. Now, uh, does the order matter? Yeah, it kind of does. I mean... It, there's a yes and a no answer to that, but I'm just going to keep it simple. The, the number, the bigger x value needs to come first on the top and bottom, and the smaller x value we're going to put second on the top and bottom. We just agree to do that. We'll, we'll both land in the same spot and be happy. So, um, all right. So the next thing we got to do is simplify this. So what's f of 6? We have to look at your table to know that. f of 6 is 7. It's the y value that goes with that. What's f of negative 3? It's 10. Double negatives make a positive on the bottom there, right? So let's go ahead and simplify this. We end up with 27 over 9, which means that, once again, we end up with a positive number of e, and therefore this is an increasing function. Okay? Increasing. All right, so that's your first example. Let's go ahead and get you guys started on a student practice here. <clears throat> so go ahead and try these two problems. Pause the video, and when you unpause it, you'll see this. Okay, so here's our solutions. For number one, you should have gotten zero, which means that it's constant on the interval from zero to two. In other words, the y value where it stopped, started is where it stopped. Um, and for number two, on the interval from negative two to three, the average rate of change was negative one, which means that on average, this function was decreasing on that interval. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and move on to another example here. And it's the same question, but it's, instead of me giving you a table, I'm going to be giving you an equation. It's, okay. So, so if I want to um, determine if this quadratic formula is increasing, decreasing, or constant on this interval, 
then I need to start by finding the rate of change. And I do that by doing the slope formula. Now, when we do our slope formula, we have two different x values that we're going to work with. And that's what these numbers are right here. The second one is your x2, and the first one there on the left is your x1. So if we were to plug these things in, it would look like this. Now, before I can go any further, um, I need to figure out what is f of 3. And, and that means what's the y value when x equals 3. So to do that, I'm going to take my function, f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 9. And I'm going to plug in the 3. Okay, and so these end up canceling each other out, and we're left with 9 there. <clears throat> and we also need to find f of 0, and we're going to repeat that process, but now we're going to plug in 0, right? And in this case, we get negative 9. So after we get those two things, we're going to go ahead and plug them in. So for f of 3, we got 9. And for f of 0, we got negative 9, which means we have 9 plus 9 on the top, which is 18 over 3, which is 6. So this is my rate of change. And since it's positive, That means that my quadratic function is increasing. Okay, so we have, uh, we start off by using our slope formula or our rate of change formula. You plug in the x values that they give you. And once you calculate your rate of change, which in my case is 6, since it's positive, we could say it's increasing. If it were negative, I would say decreasing. And if it were zero, I would say constant. All right. So let's go ahead and have you guys try one of these. So go ahead and pause the video here. Give it a shot. And when you unpause it, you will see the solution. All right, guys. So here we go. I get a final answer of negative 5 and decreasing. So my x values that they give me are negative 1 and 4. And so using that, you set up your formula. And then we need to find f of negative 1 and f of negative 4, which I've done up here. f of negative 1 turned out to be negative 9. f of negative 4 turns out to be 6. So replacing f of negative 1 with negative 9 and replacing f of negative 4 with 6. And noticing that the double negatives here become a positive, we get this. Simplify, you should end up with negative 5. All right, let's move on to the next piece here. Example 3, sketch a function that is increasing on this interval, decreasing on this interval, and constant on this interval. So let's, let's talk about that. So I want you to remember these are x values here. So this is like x1, x2. And then the next one picks up at x2, and it moves on to another x value of x3. And then this one picks up at x3 and moves on to a final x value of x4. So basically, we have four x values, negative 4 to 0, and then from 0 to 2, and then from 2 to 5. Okay, so we have four x values. So let's go ahead and draw a graph with those four x values on there. Negative 4. 0, 2, and 5. And there's that. Okay, so we have four x values, but we have three intervals. So three intervals. 
So we're going from negative 4 to 0, so that's from here to here. And then after that, we're going from 0 to 2. And then after that, we're going from 2 to 5. So I'm using a highlighter there just to highlight those different regions. Okay. Now, what does it say is happening on the interval from negative 4 to 0? So on this gray interval, what should be happening? Well, it says my function is increasing. Now, it doesn't really matter where you start. So just going to start on the x-axis. That's fine. I'm going to start here in the x-axis, but I do know that from negative 4 to 0, my function's increasing. So I know that from here to here, it's going upwards. But I stop going upwards when I get there because something new happens. On part B, from 0 to 2, the graph starts to decrease. So on this pink region here, from 0 to 2, right where I left off, my graph starts to go down again. Now, how far down? What's well, up to you? I'll just go back down to the x-axis. But I mean, technically, you, you, could, you could only go down this far. It doesn't matter how far you go, just so long as the graph actually goes down on that interval. And then lastly, it says here, constant. So from 2 to 5, my graph is constant. So from here and over, it's a flat line. And just so you guys know, I'm using straight lines just because it's simple to do that. But there's no reason it has to be straight line. Um, for instance, I could... I could use curving lines because it, it doesn't really matter if the lines are straight or not. It just matters that they do what it says. So it should be increasing on that interval. So um, one way we can get that to happen with a non-straight line is like this. Bending, right? But it's still going up. Same thing with this peak line. It could go down like that. Now constant, though, I'm going to say just to be safe, Let's just keep it always flat if it says constant. But the point is, on the interval from negative 4 to 0, it's going up. On the interval from 0 to 2, it's going down. And then the interval from 2 to 5, it's constant. So, so what were my steps, once again, as I, as I worked through that process? The first thing I did was, is I labeled my x-axis with all the x values they give. I, I put the negative 4, the 0, the 2, and the 5. I put all the x values in there that we are using. That was the first thing I did. All right, what's the next thing I did? After I labeled them, I highlighted each interval. So my first interval was from negative 4 to 0, so I highlighted that in gray. Then I highlighted my next interval from 0 to 2 in pink. Now, technically, you don't really need to do that. It's just a visual thing. It just helps you, your brain kind of see where the intervals are at. And then after that, we, we sketched the lines, which are either increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay. If you're increasing on the interval, you're going up. If you're decreasing, you're going down. And if it's constant, it's flat. And like I said, when you're doing these things, it doesn't really matter where you start. I started on the x-axis, and then I went up because I was supposed to be increasing. But it didn't have to be that way. I could have also done this. I could have started up here, and then on the interval from negative 4 to 0, I could just go up. Right? And then for the pink region from here here, I could go down. I don't have to stop at the x-axis, by the way. I can, go, I can go past the x-axis, just so long as my function is actually de decreasing from 0 to 2. We're good. And then after that, it goes over. So the point is, on the interval from negative 4 to 0, is it going up? And on the interval from 0 to 2, is it going down? And then finally, on the interval from 2 to 5, is it constant? That's all we really care about. So there's a lot of different ways to write your answers for these. But I just want to make sure you guys know what the concepts of intervals, increasing, decreasing, and constant. The whole point of it. So here's a student practice. So go ahead and pause the video here and see if you guys can sketch a graph. Remember the steps. Start by labeling your x-axis. Then highlight your intervals. And then sketch a graph so that it's constant on this interval, increasing on this interval, and decreasing on that interval. All right, so pause the video, give it a shot, and see what you guys get. All right, once again, there's a lot of 
room for different kinds of answers, but here's what matters. From x equals negative 5 to x equals negative 3, you should have a flat line. And then from x equals negative 3 to x equals 1, you should have a line that's going up. And then from x equals 1 to x equals 4, you should have a line that's going down. And that's pretty much it. Okay? And that does it for our lesson today, guys, and we'll uh, see you next time.